Hey YouTube, I am Kimbo and I blog at agranolabugan.com and this is my YouTube channel. My videos are all crafts and DIY, basically anything that's creative that gets me out of doing like the housework and the laundry and the dishes. So if that's your cup of tea, make sure to subscribe and follow along. Today's project is such a fun one. Um, I don't even know. I'm going to have to Google the name before I post this video because I, I don't know what they're called. But we're taking photos that look like this. And we're turning them into photos that look like this. I don't know if it's called like watercolor or um, like cartoon, but before you click away, before you say, oh, I can't draw, I can't do this, we are tracing. It is just tracing. We're going to draw over the first picture, trace it, and color it in. So you guys can do it. Don't get discouraged. I'm going to show you step by step how to get it done. Here is what I'm using to create these photos. Um, I'm using my iPad, my iPencil, and then the real magic is the Procreate app. This is the app that I use to design my cup files, my stickers, I love it. It does cost money, it's a one-time fee. Last I checked it was $9, I don't know if it's gone up, $8.99, but it's well worth it. You can import your own fonts, I don't know. I love it. I do have a YouTube video that kind of shows you the basics because it does a lot. So I wanted it, I wanted to do a video so it wasn't so overwhelming. So if you want to check that out, you can. Um, but that's what we're using, the Procreate app. All right, I'm in the app. I'm going to insert a photo. And I picked this photo of me and my husband like seven years ago. I don't know. There's a lot less wrinkles in this photo than we have now. So it was a little while ago. I'm just going to size it up pretty big. And then it's layer one. I'm going to add a layer. I'm going to draw on top of it in this layer. So when I'm done drawing, I can turn that layer off and have my image on top of it. So that's an important part, putting an extra layer. Um, I just use a monoline brush. I have a couple different ones. I think it comes with one, um, but it also comes with, there's painting brushes, there's texture brushes. So you can kind of play around and see if you, there's a texture or a paint that you like. If you want it to look more um, watercolor, you could use a different brush. So. I feel like everybody can take this tutorial, everybody could take a, the same photo, and everybody's image is gonna look a little bit different just because of the way that they use it, the different brushes that they use. So put your own spin on it, put your own style on it. Um, we'll walk through a couple different options. Like I don't do anything on the faces, but I've seen people add eyebrows or you know a little bit more detail. So like I said, you can kind of just take this basic tutorial and then make it your own. So I have on my, my top layer, I have my monoline brush and then this little box right here, once you click it, it's gonna come up with this color tool and you're gonna be able to pick a color. So I try to color match, um, I mean, Okay, so this is my husband's face. When I roll over it, you're gonna see how many different colors of skin. So I'm gonna pick one that's kind of in the middle. So this is the light where the light's hitting it. This is where the shadow's hitting it. So I'm gonna try to pick one that's kind of just a normal skin color. And then I'm going to zoom in. Make sure, this is the size. Oh, I'm on my wrong brush. I accidentally clicked one of the paint brushes. I wanna make sure that my size of my brush isn't too big. And then I'm gonna go around and outline his face. And I'm not gonna do his neck, cause your neck is darker you have that shading on it. So I'm gonna give him a chin and his kind of goes into his neck. So I'm gonna add that in. I'm going through pretty fast. 
I normally add a little bit more, but I'm just gonna, for the sake of this YouTube video, I don't want it 45 minutes long. So, so here's his skin, and then I'm gonna go in and do my skin. This back arrow button on this left hand side will be your best friend. Anytime you mess up, you just click it. I love it. So back arrow button, you'll definitely use quite a bit. So there's his face, my face, and then I'm gonna do my hand Why I'm here. Make my brush a little bit smaller. So if you look, I am gonna do my wedding ring like, so if you were doing someone's engagement photos, you know, you definitely would want to do the wedding ring. My wedding ring's turned in this. So this is where you get to take your creative license and maybe fix it. So it's, the diamond would be in the center when you draw it out. Oh, I did forget to show you. So I've outlined my hand Everything's connected. I gotta close those. So if you can see, hang on, let me unclick. So you can see this is unconnected, this hand right here. This is where my wedding ring was. So if I wanna color this all in, and if I wanna drag and drop, it's not going to connect it. But see this finger right here is closed. So if I drag and drop, the color will stay inside. So you wanna make sure that you're closing, click that back on. You're gonna close out your design like I did for the face and then you can just drag and drop and fill it all in with one, one swipe. It's a lot easier. I actually like this color. I think I'm gonna go in and make my face the same color so it's not, I felt like my face looked really dark compared to his face. Okay, so my daughter is amazing at these photos. She does a ton, I'll show you, because her technique's a little bit different. Um, but when she does it, she does it all on one flat layer. So she'll do the neck, the shirt, the hair, all on the same layer. I like to open up new layers. When I make my cut files, I just do everything in different layers, so that's just the habit that I have. So I'm gonna open up a new layer. I'm gonna hold it down and drag it underneath my layer too, because I'm gonna do the neck and I want it behind the head. So I'm gonna pick up a neck color that's not super dark. So since it's behind the face layer, if you can see that, it's not going to be above it. So that's why I dragged it and put it behind. So I like the separate layers because if I decide that this neck is too dark, I can easily go in and just color drop and make it a different color. If you're all on one layer, it's a little bit harder to do that, to change the color. It's still doable, so that's what, you just kinda have to decide what, what's easier for you. Because if you wanna change things out, like if your image is all done and you wanna tweak something, you have to keep going in between layers, and I think that's where there's a lot of hassle when you're going in between layers. Um, when you're picking photos, I don't, like if you're, if someone gives you a photo, you're kind of stuck, but if they give you an option of a couple photos, that's super helpful because my daughter did a photo of a family and they were sitting on rocks and without the rocks in the background, they just kind of looked floating and their legs were, because when you're sitting, your legs look a little bit different. So I think half body shots are fantastic for this technique as well as full standing, but anything sitting or leaning Anything like that is a little, it's a little harder. So, all right, we've got neck, chin, hand. I'm gonna do shirt, I'm gonna open up a new layer. 
and I want it underneath this hand. I'm gonna pick up a gray. Another thing um, is some of the photos, when you're picking up colors, I was doing one and they had edited it to the point where the skin almost took a, a little orange hue and then the hair kept pulling blue. It was a sandy blonde, but every time I would try to color drop, it looked more blue. So when it was done, it just did not look good. <laughs> so that's where you're gonna use your creative license a little bit and um, if it doesn't look natural, you can add in. So you can color drop, but if you are not loving the colors it's picking, you could definitely just make your own to make it look good. So like this sleeve, how it flares out, it flares out quite a bit. So I'm just gonna take it off a little bit because I think it's gonna look weird if I don't. And then you can see my husband's arm right here has a ton of wrinkles. So I'm gonna go around them. I'm not gonna give him all the detail of it. I'm just gonna do some basic shape of the wrinkle. So I'm showing you a easy peasy and then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna show you a little more detail for the wrinkles, so. Kind of looks like he's got a chest assist over here. We wanted to give his arm a little bit more definition. My hair, I did around my hair and it looks a little wonky right there. So after I get my hair done, if it still looks weird, I might go in there and change that. All right, I have his shirt done. And see, this is what's nice is, since I'm on my own layer, if I wanna change the color, I can drag and drop it. So I'm gonna open up a new layer and do my sweater. And I wanna grab a really light pink, because I, I don't want it to be too close to the skin tone. There's a lot of detail when you get to the hair. You can see all these little pieces. So I'm going to just do the basics. I mean, you're definitely not gonna wanna draw in all this windblown flyaways. So I'm cutting off and just leaving the big chunks of hair so it doesn't look so chaotic in the picture. Make sure that's connected. All right, got my shirt. And then we'll do hair. So there's actually a brush. I'm pretty sure it comes with it. Touch-ups, there's fine hair, flowing hair, and short hair. So it has a, a texture of the hair. Um, I don't use it, I just kind of use the same technique. But if you want to play around with that, you might find that you really like it. So I am, since my husband, his hair is a little spiky, it's not super smooth. When I go in here, oh, I'm on the brush hair. That's why it's, I can't see it. Um, I'm going to go and I'm just going to bounce it a little bit to give it a little bit more texture. So I don't love this color. I'm gonna pick up a different color and see if I can get it more blonde. Mm, okay. 
I'm, I normally would tweak around that with that a little bit more, but I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna do my hair. I'm on a new layer. So that's how I do the basic. Um, you're gonna wanna go and you unclick because like this looks great. When you unclick, you're able to see little moments, little pieces of white that are kind of peeking through. And that's where it's kind of a pain to have them all on separate levels is cause, oops, dropped my brush. Um, you have to go into each level. Fill it in a little bit. Make it look good. And like I said, use your creative license. If something looks weird, if the skin doesn't look correct, or you know, there's a problem with something, tweak it and make it look better. So like right here, he still has that weird pooch where my hair isn't. So I'm just going to connect my hair and make it sm make it look good. That's the basics. When I give someone an image, I give them a copy of this. And then I also give them a copy because I think it looks really cool when you have this real background with these um, drawn on on the top of it. I just like it. So I give him this copy and then I give him the copy without the background. Now my daughter takes this one step further and adds in a little bit more lights and darks. Let me show you. So here is an example of one that she has done. Um, and if you zoom in, you can see that the girl has, she's drawn in the roots. She's added a dark part on the brim of the hat. They're shading in her arm, her neck has an ombre effect where it fades down. She's added in outline of the overalls, right? There's a part in the hair. She's got dark and light moments in the hair, which I think looks super good too. So I'm gonna show you, she's definitely better at it than I am. Um, but I'm gonna show you how to add the lights and darks. All right, we're back to this. So what we're gonna do is we'll start with the shirt. I'm gonna unclick the shirt so I can pick up a darker color of the shirt. And then right above the shirt layer, I'm going to open up a new layer. So I'm gonna draw on top of the shirt. But I'm going to click on the layer, put clipping mask, and what clipping mask does is if I draw anything on the shirt, it's going to show, but it's only going to keep to whatever that layer is underneath it. Do you see how I can't go above it? It's only drawing on that layer. That way I'm not going to get anything on the neck, face, anything like that. And then I'm going to switch my brush to an airbrush because I'm gonna try to just do light. Airbrush is like an airbrush. Light, it's just a softer, not a hard edge. And I'm going to take and make this so I can almost see through it. Because I wanna make sure that I can see this bottom layer so I can add in the lights and darks. So I'm gonna go and add wherever there's a little bit of a shadow. Okay, so there's my shadows. And I think they look a little harsh. So I'm still on my layer. I'm going to go over here and blur it. 
and just move this over a tiny bit and it softens. You can see, and you can go crazy or just a little bit. Just wanna soften them a little bit. And then I'm gonna go in one more time and I'm gonna add a little bit of detail I'm gonna add in, I've made my airbrush really small. You can go in, add as much detail as you want. If you look closely on his collar, you can see that there's all those little lines. You can go and add them in if you want. Make it your own. For time's sake, I'm not. <laughs> And then you'll just do this with every layer. I'm gonna soften up this neck. I'll do it through one more time. I'm gonna add a layer above whatever layer you're working on. Clipping mask. I'm gonna pick up this neck color and then I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna pick a color above it. And then I'm just gonna soften it up. That looks really orangey. Soften it up a little bit. And then do my blur. And you can do this with every layer, you could add as much detail as you want. You can, I, if they do have, if they have wear glasses, I usually do draw the glasses, but you could draw eyes, you can draw, like if they have smiling lips, you could just draw just the lips. I've seen people draw just the eyebrows. You can totally make it your own, however you want. That's the fun part about these projects is that you get to Make it your own. Basic idea, here's the basic idea, run with it. I'm gonna add in my highlights at the bottom. And then I know I've got some swoops. And then if it's still a little too light, you can take and make it a little bit more opaque. So that's the basics. Um, my favorite part about this app is that it does a time lapse of your drawing. If you go up here to the tool, you could do video and then watch the time lapse replay, which I think is super fun to watch. And I'm gonna show you um, a couple that my daughter did, just so you can get an idea of all that's possible with this basic technique. All right, so look, I printed it out, framed it. Is that not the cutest? Oh, I've got a, I've got a glare from my window. Is that not the cutest gift idea? I just think they turn out so amazing. I love it. I love it. So if you guys end up doing this tutorial and making something amazing, please send it to me. I love seeing your guys' projects. I'm on all the social medias at a girl in a glue gun, um, or you can email me, whatever. Any way you can contact me, please do. I would love to see it. And if you like this video, you'll probably like some of my other videos. So make sure to subscribe and follow along and give a thumbs up and, you know, all those things that everybody's telling you to do on YouTube.